Hello, everybody. Thank you uh, for attending today's webinar. My name is uh, Peter McKee. I'm on the developer relations team here at Docker. And today we're going to be talking about breaking containers to improve security. And we have Eric Smalling from SNCC on the webinar with us, and he's going to be talking about some really cool stuff. Eric is a former colleague of mine here at Docker. Um, I'm really happy to have you on. How are you doing, Eric? I am doing well. How are you, sir? I am I am hanging in there. I think both <laughs> you and I survived the winter storm last week yes. in here in Austin in the Texas area, but we're ready to go. Awesome. Well, thanks for joining yeah. everybody. Uh, as Pete said, my name is Eric Smalling. I am a developer advocate at Sneak and Sneak and Docker, as you probably are aware, are partnered. We power the uh, image scanning technologies behind both Docker Desktop and Docker Hub. And uh, today we're going to go over an interesting topic on um, containers as far as, you know, what does an exploit look like? If somebody breaks into your container, what, what can they do? And then how can Docker and Sneak's tools help you to uh, you know, fix that problem? So before I get started into the actual demo, uh, let me step back a little bit and talk, you know, like, like Pete said, we used to work together. I was a consultant at Docker uh, working on uh, with customers for a while. And um, one of the you know, common things we would do is, you know, customers will have, or, you know, people will have uh, applications that have been around a while and they want to modernize them. We used to have an entire program called Modernized Traditional Apps. And uh, some people would call that a lift and shift, although I think that's too simplistic. But you would take an app and you want, you, often it was like an old app that you'd be, been sitting on for a long time and running on a server in the corner in the data center. Uh, we all have remember those if you've been around for any length of time. And before you boil the ocean and rewrite it as a big 12-factor cloud-native compliant app, um, oftentimes it's better just let's get it into a container and start modernizing it in chunks, whether that be immediately, you know, before we go production with the containerized app, or as we go. Oftentimes we we pull something in, put it in a container, get it running so that now it's portable. Now you have uh, your what used to be manual runbooks are codified into Docker files and Swarm or Kubernetes manifests, and uh, you can now automate things, right? And then it makes it easier to start using the Strangler pattern or some other pattern to carve things off. Well, oftentimes what would happen is you get an application into a container, which is, you know, can be ranged from anywhere from easy to uh, insanely hard. But once you get it in there, all of a sudden you realize, oh shoot, nobody's been watching this app. Uh, it's been sitting there making us money. You know, it's an important app or it's, you know, critical to the you know, running of the, the company in some way. But there's some issues in this app that we weren't really aware of, whether that be because it's a you know, nobody really was taking a look at it from a security point of view, or, you know, it's just, this thing just chugs along, it works. But now that we've uh, taken a look at what's actually in it, it's kind of scary. Um, so that's what I'm gonna focus on today. I've got a contrived example. It's not, I'm not gonna get anything too detailed because we only have an hour to talk, but we're gonna look at a very simple old Node.js based application that has a problem that was uh, exposed several years ago and um, just kind of show an example of just a taste of what you could do to that app. And then how, uh, like I said, how Docker and Sneaks tools can uh, help you find that. So uh, without further ado, let me actually just open a terminal. I'm not gonna be showing you much for slides at all today. I don't do slides when I do these demos. This is, I figure you guys are here to see the actual code. Um, I have a very simple uh, GitHub repository. I'll make this public afterwards. So you, if you'd like to try this out on your own, I uh, need to do a little bit of cleanup before I, I give you the URL to it. But uh, if you watch my Twitter account at Eric Smalling, I'll run together. I'll post it there uh, as well as on the community.sneak.io page. And we'll give you those links for the end of the talk. Uh, let me Eric, actually... Yep. Hey. Eric, I, I forgot to mention at the beginning, sorry folks. Um, if you look over in the webinar as Eric goes through, if you want to ask questions, uh, there's a question section. You can fill out a question there. I'll keep an eye on those and I uh, will try and answer them as we go through. Absolutely. Thanks, right. Pete. And Thanks. break in any time a question comes in that you feel is relevant uh, that I need to stop and talk. I'm good with answering on the fly. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So as we can see, we've got a very simplistic, very old application that's based on Docker image node 610. Uh, any of you, I'm not a node programmer by by history. I, I know enough to be dangerous here, but as Pete, I think you're a node, you're a JavaScript programmer. That's pretty old. 
Yes. <laughs> and, yes. Um, what's interesting about this is let's let's jump to my terminal, and I'm going to build this. Build. We'll tag this. Uh, actually, uh, so we're going to push this. So I've got a come on auto complete. There we go. I'm going to call this old. Tag like that. This should be cached, so it should be pretty quick. This this application is a very simplistic thing that takes an Im it gives you a very HTML 1.0 looking page um, and takes an image and we'll use the uh, infamous prop package image magic to resize that image to a Twitter friendly size. Uh, so let's kick it off. I've got it cached. Of course I don't. Docker run. We're going to leave it in the let's do this rm it and just let it pick a port. Purple Adobe old. There we go. So we have it listening. Let's see what port it gave me. So it has tied that to port 55001. There we go. So as I said, very, very one, web 1.0. Uh, let's pick a file and just make sure that the app is working. So I've got a picture here that I use on my Zoom a lot. Hey, there we go. So that, that worked, yay. Now let's try something else. So if any of you are familiar with Image Magic, there, about four or five years ago, there was a vulnerability found in it that uh, actually was bad enough that got a name. They call it Image Tragic. And if we take a look, go back to browser, you can, instead of a JPEG, oh yes, just, just open it because it's not really a binary. You can put instructions <laughs> for Image Magic into a file called .jpeg. And image magic will not care about the input validation on it. It'll just say, oh, okay, let's just do whatever it says, including uh, remote code execution vulnerability. So this is going to, when I upload this, it's going to touch, create a file named RCE1 in my container so that I can show you that. Let's do Docker exec into container that's running. Bash. Okay, so here we are. There's the inside of my running container. Let's get back over to Chrome. We'll run that. We'll upload that uh, RCE one. And it says success. We don't see an image, but sure enough, if we come over here and look at the directory again, we have an RCE one file just got created. So. That's bad. <laughs> that's 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 not that's not the behavior you want out of your your uh, application. Uh, what's worse is we have another file in there. Yeah, go away. Um, that instead of just creating a file, um, what if we were to actually go pull a file from somewhere else on the internet and uh, run it? That that seems a little more uh, with the word bad. <laughs> so just a second, I've got a local little file server running here on my laptop and that will serve that to it, but it could be anywhere, of course, on the internet that the server would have access to. So what's happening now? I'm going to, oops, actually, sorry, I didn't, my terminal on my other window didn't, uh, I don't know. Hold on a sec. Sorry, just a second. This happens when you have too many terminals. Exit my exec, and I'll just run it from here. Un momento. Going to get a netcat running over here. And you see, there's nothing happening on it yet, but I'm going to reapply my 
exploit live demos guys it always never ceases to fail yeah yeah that's part of the fun of it yeah well apparently i fixed this vulnerability <laughs> hold on a second let me see what's going on over here hmm i have that running it's going to pull rsh rsh exists ah. One more time, this way. Mm. Sorry, Pete, just a sec. <laughs> oh, no, no worries at all. Did have a, uh, a question. So to get, uh, sneak the sneak integration you get down go download docker desktop so either for windows or mac if you go to docker.com into our product section you could download desktop and install that and that includes the sneak integration uh which eric will be showing in here in a little bit but it'll show it uh integrates sneak into the cli so you can run scans locally uh see vulnerabilities and those type of things to get it onto linux it we do not have a desktop docker desktop for linux but um you could grab the binaries and there's if you go to our docs and um i'll put i'll put the link um here in the chat in a second but you can follow the the steps to install uh the scanning locally for Linux. i think i cowboyed it a little bit too much for them let me uh restart this with a specific port I may have set up my exploit to depend on a particular port. <laughs> it is going to be problematic for me. What I was preparing to show you was the fact that that netcat I have running actually has shell access right into that container. I'm not sure why it's actually not working. What we should be seeing happening is when the request comes in, it uh, runs what we saw in the exploit, which triggers running of a script that it downloads, pull, installs netcat. From this directory, so we have the script that will go get netcat, untar it, cd into the directory created, run configure, build netcat up, and then run against 3131. That is the port that I was listening on. Give it one more try, and then we'll just have to add libsys from there. Yeah, no problem. Have to run. Two. Oh, you know what? Did I give it a different name when I built it? No, that was the name I gave it. Hmm. And I know the exploit's there because you saw the direct the file get created. There's just something yeah. 
I'm assuming when I, like I said, my terminal had died on me some point between now and then. Let me fire up something over here. Ah, the life of live demos. At least I'm not on a stage where I can see you guys all much. <laughs> Yep. Right but like here. you said, you can see the you can see the um that that yeah. that uh, script being downloaded, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, Which we are in a bueno. bad position already, just because you saw that that one thing could happen. So there's that. Now that I have started it up in a new shell, let's see if. Get it to cooperate. No, it's, of course, it's not going to. Okay, so I, I apologize. Um, I live demos, guys. That's that's what happens in live demos. Let's step back from that though. So you did see the one uh, exploit where we created a file. Um, imagine what else you can do if you can exec on a on a um, inside the container. Now, there's a few things you could think of that you could do to uh, mitigate this. You could run the container in read-only file system mode. That would stop that downloading aspect, but generally, a lot of system, a lot, a lot of uh, especially legacy apps that you move over are going to need some kind of read file system, write file system, um, whether it be in the containers uh, layers or on a volume. And all it would take would be an attacker to kind of figure out where that writable area is. Often it's in slash temp, and even if it's just a, a you know you're running in Kubernetes and you're just using an empty dir which you probably would be for the kind of you know work this is doing where it needs a scratch area to, to rewrite these image files. Um, as soon as they figure that out, all of a sudden, well, I'll just install Netcat over there and run it over there. So uh, that, that's that's a good mitigation, and you should run read-only mode if, you, if your app can. Um, and you should mount your volumes read-only if you can. But uh, a lot of these older apps, that, that becomes very difficult to, to do. Um, what could we have done, though? What can Docker's tools do to help you mitigate this problem? We've already built this. I'm going to run a Docker scan. And as Pete was alluding, so the, the sneak uh, container scanning technology is available both through the sneak command line, which you can install with a simple NPM install, or built right into Docker Desktop. So if you're running on a Windows or Mac and have Docker Desktop, if you have a version that's within the last, gosh, nine months, I think, you will have this command available to you. So I can do Docker scan. And I'm just going to scroll up and steal. I, oops, I'm going to go over here and steal GTP that. Back over here, paste it into the command. So I'm, I'm telling Docker to use the sneak scanner on that image. And I'm going to feed it a little bit of extra info here. I'm going to tell it, and this is the Docker file I used to create that image. Now that's going to grind for a minute while it uh, while it kind of looks at what's in the base image, what's what's what app packages, what all is installed on it. So while that's grinding away, let's jump over to my sneak account. Now everything I show you today, by the way, I don't think I mentioned this. Everything I show you is available in our freemium project. So anything that's in the sneak UI, uh, you would need an account on the sneak system, but it's, it's free. There's no, there's nothing here that's in the paid tier. Um, what you're looking at right now is my personal project list. And we call a project, uh, basically, in this case, I have a Docker Hub imported image, and I have a command line based um, output from, from a scan. That's what the little shell is there. And hey, look at that, I can stall long enough for anything. here. So what we've seen here is this is, as we said at the beginning, hella old version of Node and Debian that it's based on. In fact, it's so old, that our advice is, you know, look, did they, they're not updating this anymore. You need to get on a newer version. Um, in fact, Debian 8 is no longer even supported by the Debian um, maintainers. So if you scroll up, you can kind of see why. And this is a very long list. I am not going to go through this whole list. Uh, but you're seeing all these vulnerabilities that are coming in introduced by my base image. I can scroll and scroll and scroll. And eventually this will switch from just the things, just the, the, the upstream crap that you're getting from that image to individual packages that are in there. If I look hard enough through this, through the high severities, we're gonna find an image magic um, input validation error. Now, um, 
we can look through the CI tool that way, or if you have the sneak tool itself, there is a command called container monitor, which is nice in that, and I can feed in the rest of the arguments, you know, what image I want, what Docker file built it. Um, this will link to your sneak account and do what you see here. It'll create a project that will continually be tracked by the sneak system. Um, sneak will every, by default, every day, it will look at the information about these, this container that I, at the point I sent it up, and it will tell me what vulnerabilities it found. And this is just a prettier look at what we did, what we saw from the Docker scan, um, container scan. And let this load. And of course, <laughs> it never fails. They just updated the UI at, like today. So uh, if, if you see me fumbling, uh, it's because they moved some things around. Search used to, if you've used our tools before, the search used to be over on the left. Now it's at the top, and I believe it's more, uh, it can search on more fields. Uh, but what I want to find is out of these, gosh, what is it saying? 1,530 issues. I really only care about the high ones, and I actually know what I'm looking for. So I'm going to look for image magic. And we're seeing there, first top score. Uh, by score, what, I'm, what I mean is sneaks, uh, security scientists look at all the vulnerabilities uh, in, the, in, the, uh, the, in the database. They weight it by the CVVS score, which is the CVE, um, the SS, it's the, it's the severity scores, um, as well as the fact that uh, this is a mature exploit. And what I mean by mature is that there is published code to exploit this available freely. So anybody could, could get this. Um, we can view more details, we can get into this. And this is where Sneak's value starts to come in as far as more than just a, a list from your CLI or, or a spreadsheet list of what vulnerabilities are there. We will walk you through as much detail as you and your, your security team wanna go through on what this thing means, what, what's, it, what's its impact. Um, and in, in a lot of cases, we'll be able to give you advice like here, this is fixed in this version of Image Magic. Now you saw from the, the tool, you're, we're just on a really old base image, so we should get onto a newer base image to uh, get rid of this. So that's what I'm going to do. Let's go back over to here, and it's saying that you know basically all throughout this, we're seeing that all of these base image other is issues we have are fixed in newer versions of six of Node six. Let's say we don't want to leave Node 6 just yet. We're not sure our application is going to work on a newer version of Node. So I'm going to just simply change my Docker file. Back to it. And I'm just going to change it to Node 6, which, you know, in, in Docker tagging, uh, that means the latest Node 6. Now, you in a production environment, you probably want to specify, pinpoint exactly which one uh, you want to use. But for the sake of simplicity here, let's do a build. And oh gosh, I got so many things in my buffer. <laughs> Clear Docker build, and we'll call this. I'm not going to upload this one, so I'm just going to give it a, a quick name: RCE for Remote Code Execution. Um, and we'll call this uh, Node Six. Just to be clear, we'll do a build on this real quick, and we'll scan it, and we'll see how much better or worse it is. And you also get a chance to see, you know, you know I guess I, Node 6 is old. So there probably will be some more advice as far as what uh, we might want to do to make this even more secure. File, Docker file. So again, rinse and repeat. And one, th oops, Docker scanner. Uh, one thing to note here is I've not waited for a CI pipeline. I've not waited for a security team to come give me this information. All of this is on my local workstation. We have plugins, we have integrations that we can help you with for you know other tools like that. But um, this is before I even you know push this to Docker Hub. Um, now, while we wait for that to scan, since I mentioned Docker Hub. Actually, I have that open already here. Uh, I pushed this yesterday. This is the same thing visible if you have uh, one of the paid tiers of Docker Hub. So the sneak scanning is built into that. And it, the Docker Hub scan actually is uh, it's reporting a really high number of high, 
that seems suspect to me. Um, <laughs> I will have a, to take a look at that uh, after the fact, but it, it's uh, it's scanned it. It's found that interesting. How much did I have? Um, right here, you you have vulnerabilities in the image, and you can drill right into these and see the same kind of information, a little bit uh, more tight view of where is it finding that. And then if you want to get really detailed, you can jump right back over to our interface and where I have that Docker Hub attached to that image, I can drill in and we're going to see it very similar to what we just saw from the command line monitor. And we can search for image, of course, and we should, there we go. We can find the same kind of information here. Um, Do, 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 do. And this is from when I was playing. This is a similarly old version of Node, just the wheezy distribution of Debian. Go back to our command line. Okay, so this is interesting. So we've run this, and we've we've dropped our dependencies down, uh, our our uh, vulnerabilities down to 872, which is not still not great. But because we're now getting into versions of Debian. Uh, that these things are based on that are supported. We're still a non unknown supported version of Node. If you were to go to the Node community and say, hey, I got a problem, they're going to tell you to go to another version. But um, because the Debian underneath it is supported, we do have some advice now. And we're saying, you know, based on what we're seeing, and we can scroll up and we can see all this, um, Node 6 comes with all of this. If you were able to upgrade to one of these alternatives, you could start reducing your number of vulnerabilities even more. And I'm not going to follow this train all the way down uh, down the path because we only don't have all that time today. But it's saying, hey, if you could upgrade your version of Node to 10, 24, um, especially if you can go to a bus, uh, a slim version, which is you know just the minimums for Node, we could drop our vulnerability counts all the way down to 56, and then we could you know manage that. We could figure out, okay, what's left of those that we need to fix? What do we need to prioritize now? That's a that you know this is a conversation you have to have with your architects, your other developers. Make sure you're not picking something that will break your app. Does your app work under Node 10? I can tell you right now what we're doing in this app, which is horrible, <laughs> won't work in a slim image because it doesn't have Image Magic installed. So we would have to either augment our Docker file to install that app package, which is fine. You can do that. Or we would need to go with a non-slim version that uh, that actually packs with it, which I believe that one does. Um, but it's going to be a little bit of trial and error there. But my, you know, where I'm getting at here is that this is all information given to me as a developer, where I'm sitting here at my screen, not having to wait for for again an hour for a pipeline to run to, to tell me this kind of info. I can now I can apply this. I can do my trial and error right in my own uh, normal IDE workflow. Hey Eric, we got a we got a great question. Uh, Spencer asks, "What's the purpose of passing the Docker file to the Docker scan ah, command?" Great question. So when you do a scan, so let's say I just did uh, Docker scan. I'm just going to do a base image. So we'll do Docker scan node six. Um, I don't have a Docker file for that, right? The only thing that we're going to be able to scan, we'll be able to rip through and look for vulnerabilities, but we don't have all the metadata about how you built that image. Node 6 is a terrible example because that's a that's a supported online image. We probably have the hash for that. But if this was Eric's cool image 7 that I built from a Docker file, um, it's not going to be able to know, you know, what was your base image for that? All I've got is a hash. And unless it's a well-known hash to our database, um, it's, it's going to have to struggle to figure out, okay, where did these vulnerabilities come from? And that it impacts the advice our tool can give you as far as, oh, well, if you just upgrade your, your base image, you, you'll be able to get away from, a, 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 you know, away from a lot of this. We are actually adding some enhancements. I don't know the timeline for when they'll come out for um, uh, minimizing the need for that. Uh, for instance, if you, do, if you do a Docker image history, you can see layers and, and what's being done in each one. And I think we're gonna be leveraging that a bit more as we go. But right now, the, the base image pieces, uh, we're having to work on that to try to figure out how to do that without a Docker file. So for now, we feed the Docker file in mainly so we know what the base image is. What you know, we, we understand multi-stage builds, so we're going to pull from the base of the last stage, all that kind of info. 
with metadata. In fact, yeah, Eric. Yep. Go, go sorry, I was just thinking. Um, I kind of think of uh, the adding the Docker file as um, kind of debug symbols. It's not the exact uh, yep. analogy, right? But it's you know, I think Sneak is looking at, you know, binary, right? And if you give it some hints with the Docker file, it goes, oh, okay, I can see, you know, this is your base image, kind of like when you uh, add symbols to your compiled code. Right. You know, instead of just getting, you know, uh, you know, uh, CPU you commands, you can actually equate the to code lines in the code, right? Yep, kind of like hinting. It's giving it more yes. info about it. Okay, so that's... Given that the you know, node sticks dropped the number of vulnerabilities, um, let me scroll back up here. <laughs> I shouldn't have run that other scan because now I got to scroll forever. <laughs> scroll up here. I'm driving, streaming crazy with the constantly changing terminal. Uh, there it was. No, oh, that wasn't. Oh, there it is. Yeah, there it is. So, um, this is really kind of cool. So let's take, um, like I said, I'm not going to go too far down this rat hole, but let's take a look at this. And I'm come into my editor, put that in there. Now I could run the app as it is now and show you that that RCE is fixed, um, but the number of vulnerabilities that we're seeing on this really, as a, in a real world situation, we wouldn't be looking at staying on, on Node 6. We'd be like, okay, this app needs to be upgraded to something that at least the Node team is you know, aware of anymore. Um, but let's do Docker build, tag it, I am going to give this a uh, tag, same tag as the base image, just so it's easy to see. <clears throat> I feel terrible that, that that exploit didn't work. I don't, I don't know why it didn't. <laughs> it's worked for the last 48 hours. Okay, that's there, and I am going to. I'm actually going to do a monitor on this so you can see how that imports. So again, to do this, you would need to install the sneak tool, monitor, oops, container monitor, file, and we need, for some reason, our tool wants an equal sign on that. Um, so it's very similar. You'll see the output looks similar. A monitor doesn't give you the scan output. It just says, hey, I'm analyzing, I'm uploading. Um, uh, the same output as the Docker scan would be from a container test, if you're interested. Um, and that, what's going to happen in a moment is we will, we should see a new project being pulled in that looks very similar to this one. What's also interesting while we wait. When I, in order to get this here, all you have to do in our tool is, and we're not going to pull in every image that you would ever upload to Docker Hub because you know you may not want to scan all those. What you do is you come over and you say add from Docker Hub, and I've already linked the two with my account. See all the crap I have in my personal stuff, um, and here is. I simply, it's already, it's got a check mark because it's already there. So it's not going to do anything to choose this now. You just pick this and it automatically will go to Docker Hub and it will pull it down. And like I said before, just, just like the CLI monitor, we will, we will take the, all the information about that image and we will reapply our scan to it daily. Um, you can change that to be weekly or, or to not do it if you don't want to. But that way, if let's say we have, you know, 748 vulnerable, high vulnerabilities today, Tomorrow we might have 800 because new things were found. Even if you don't change and repush a new image, um, this is very similar. If you've used our tool for the open source code scanning capabilities, it's the same idea. Uh, you may build your Java app today, and it's it's completely vulnerability free. But all it takes is one you know CVE to get opened tomorrow, and without you changing a line of code, all of a sudden 
you may have a vulnerability that could be exploited that you just didn't know about. Um, so that is part of, also part of the free tier. And you get a nice little email and say, hey, we found a vulnerability in your project last night. Here's the info. You should probably go fix this. It's still running back there. Oh, just finished. So we should see. Just the last log. Oh, it, it updated. Uh, I use the same thing. Oh, all right. There it goes. It updated the project with the 10120 buster, and it knows that um, it tested two minutes ago. So there we go. Image tag is now that, and it's saying, okay, so here's here's where we are. You now have 39 high severity issues. And we could go through and we could look at, you know, what, what's the what's the recommendations? Well, again, you could upgrade to a different one. If you didn't need the things that are in Buster, you could go Buster Slim and drop down to 10 vulnerabilities. And honestly, if this was a real world scenario on a real app, that's what I'd be looking at. Is what Can I get by with a Slim? Can I get by with maybe, you know, if, if we can do it in Apache, I'm sorry, Alpine uh, image, um, look for other things be, even beyond what what's uh, the, the simple. We're we're being very conservative here, trying to keep you on a version of Node that's compatible and keep you in in the in you know an upgrade that should still work. Um, you'll notice before it was actually saying, hey, you might check Node 14. Well, there's a lot of apps when you jump that high a version difference, you're going to have problems with. So there's going to be some play that you've got to do. You know, know your app, know what you can do. Um, you don't want to go like from a Python 2 to a Python 3, um, things like that. JDK changes in Java apps, uh, that can be fun as well. And I guess I should go ahead and show that the app actually does work now. So if we call this 1024. Buster, so we're listening back here and type at RCE one, and we get a real broken image here. I'll take it back for that one. And there's no RC one, so we we have we've upgraded to the point where we don't need to worry about that vulnerability anymore. And I happen to know because I've been playing with this a bit. If we do a convert, that's the that's the image magic command that's being used in the back. Um, and the vulnerable version is six seven eight nine. Interestingly uh, sequential, but we're now on six nine ten, so we're past that version of image magic that had the problem. And just to make sure. More importantly, or as importantly, I should say, we can still resize our cat, who's not a cat. Okay. Um, what else? Oh, yeah. Let me um, real quick before before I forget to give you these, I'm going to put this up for a little bit so you can take a screenshot. We will. Uh, can you put some of these into the chats? For me, Beats. Yes. Thank you. I'll make this. And we'll also we can also put them in the um. We'll send out a replay, and we can yes. we can put these uh, links in the in the email there too. Perfect. Um. So these. I have links, a quick question. Uh, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say I uh, got a quick question in from uh, Spencer. Um. Does uh snake, snick or sneak? I call it both. So I'll call it's, it sneak this time. It's sneak according <laughs> to our founder. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> uh, does Sneak support monitoring K8s clusters? We do oh, have a, a monitoring capability. Um, it is not in the free tier. Um, I believe it might be in the free tier if you're an open source organization, like if you have an open source project. Uh, I, I would have to, you'd have to check our pricing page for that. I only deal with the free tier stuff. Um, the Kubernetes monitoring piece, 
Uh, what it does is it, it is a, if you're just on standard Kubernetes, it's a Helm chart that deploys a controller that will watch application deployments. And if you either manually uh, uh, grab a uh, deployment workload, or if you annotate that workload in a certain way, it will automatically pick it up. It'll create projects for those workloads and it will monitor the deployment itself for some common security context and other settings that you should probably be setting. It'll also scan any image uh, that it sees being deployed and give you a report of what images are in the deployment and matching those to the scans that we have of them. Uh, it does not, the, the, I'm gonna answer a question I'm, I'm thinking is coming up because I always get it. It does not do enforcement. So we are staying with the, you know, there are other products that are built for enforcement. Uh, if you're looking to do that, I would take a look at, you know, OPA and Gatekeeper if you want to stay open source. Um, it's, uh, you know, you could look at pod security policy, but they're being, uh, that's being sunset, it's being, uh, what do you call it, deprecated. Um, but we are more on the side of monitoring and showing what can happen. Uh, if you go to sneak.io, go to the products page and look at the cloud native area, we'll have details, there's details on that. Um, but yeah, we do have on the free tier though, we do scan YAML manifests. So if you've got Kubernetes manifests uh, in your, say your GitHub repository and you point our tool at that repository, it will pick those up and it'll actually scan, I'm gonna get off script here, danger, danger. <laughs> I'm gonna jump out to, I think I've got some examples in this directory. Uh, nope, not that one. Just did another presentation where I showed some of those uh, manifests. So here is a very simple manifest we have. And I'm sorry, I'm getting a little off script, Pete. I'll, I'll, I'll make it quick. Um, no, you're fine, you're fine. So, oh, that, oh, I have modified my, back to a known good state here. Okay, so this is a simple uh, Kubernetes deployment and it deploys, this was something I had out in ECR. Um, we can scan that manifest, like I said, by attaching GitHub to this. Uh, Kubernetes monitor will catch this at deployment time. And for instance, one of the things it would tell you is that uh, we don't have limits on our resources. That's something that you should have all the time. You should never want to deploy containers in, in a production orchestrated environment and let them have willy nilly access to all the CPU and memory on a, on a node. Because you could, you know, a bad actor could get in and start uh, mining Bitcoin, take all your CPU, or just a, a, a you know an endless loop or a memory leak in your application could do that. But we also can scan this um, uh, yourself. So if we do this sneak IAC for infrastructure as code test, do deployment animal, and you can feed in multiple files for this, but uh, see, and if you can smell sneak right, that helps. Um, these are nice and speedy because it's all local. Um, it doesn't have to really, it goes out to our database just to make sure it has the updated data, database. But we can see some of the things that it has found is uh, do, 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 do. running without root, root user control. Yeah, that that you wanna make sure you run as not root, as non-root is set if you cannot, if you can, um, you should. And if you can't, you should update your container so you can, your image. Um, there's the memory limits, CPU limits. Uh, the coloring on this, we don't have any high ones showing up here, but we have mediums and lows. These actually are editable too. So if you have um, a desire for run is not root to be a high level severity, um, then you can set it that way and it'll be that way for the, either the project or the organization. You can then set up, let's say you're running this as part of your CI, you can actually have it um, break the build if it's uh, you know a certain severity level or not. Um, but anyway, so all that's included in the free tier, all the IAC scanning. Um, we also scan Terraform. So if you wanted to, uh, let's say I, I use Terraform for my uh, my AWS uh, deployments a lot, and I can scan that. We're at, we just added support for Terraform for Azure and GCP, and we're growing the number of policies and issues we check. IAC scanning is interesting because these aren't vulnerabilities per se. They're 
practices. I, I hate to use the word best practice because that's a loaded term, but these are things that we we know from what the community has, has found or what we see out in the community, you should probably be doing or else you could run into issues. If you're not limiting memory, like I said, a process can take down a node. Um, and that's that's true, I mean, that's true in Kubernetes, that's true in Swarm, that's true anywhere. But um, as I said, those, if you go to sneak.io, go to our product page, that is under, there's infrastructure as code, and then the Kubernetes monitoring, I believe, is under the CNA security platform. You go there and take a look at uh, what's there. Uh, if you want to know what's in the free tier or not, the pricing page has that. Uh, it has tabs for open source container and both. Um, one of the things to note here is when you use the um, Docker in integrated scanning, and Pete, you might have to uh, re refresh my memory. If you you will you will want to connect to a sneak account. Um, if you don't, yes. I think do we get do we uh, currently give free scans without it, but like just a couple or something? Yeah, I think you get a hundred free scans without if you connect and just do uh, connect your Docker ID into a sneak uh, account, just using your Docker ID for single sign on, you get two two hundred for free. Okay, um, cool. And that, and that's all on the free tiers across both. Yep. So this information is if you're using the Sneak tools. So if you're using Sneak Container Scan, it sounds like Docker Scan is actually giving you a little bit more than. Uh, so there you go. Use that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Two. I got. Um, I got a. Uh, go ahead. I got another question though. When you're ready. Go for it. Okay. Cool. Um, so the report you generated. Is it possible to iterate with this in CI? So GitHub monitoring apps. Mm -hmm. The latter would uh, display info along with. Um, the generated app metrics, so you have a single place uh, to see it all. So yeah, yeah I so, think you're, oh, yeah, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, say, yeah, we have uh, integration with several CI platforms for doing things like that. If, I, if I'm understanding the question right, for instance, we have a GitHub action that if you um, use it and you output, you, you tell the tool or the, the, the action to output in serif format, GitHub knows how to in, ingest that and shows it up as security problems in your in your uh, build. Um, I haven't looked at the Jenkins one in a while, but I, I know you can. You can uh, basically all of the security issues. I think in the Jenkins one, it shows they show up as test failures or something. I'm not. I don't quote me on that though. Yeah, yeah, and you could do um, even simple stuff. You know, uh, uh, poor man CI, I should say, is running a scan, dumping the JSON. Oh, absolutely. Ch and checking that in, right, and running it again and diffing the JSONs, right? That's very, a good point. Yeah. Man, but <laughs> oh, yeah, no, that's I mean that's great. I mean all, all the output you saw, I, I was showing the command line human readable interface. Yeah, you can dump all yeah. that as JSON and then pipe it to JQ or do, or whatever tool you've got to to uh, do whatever you want or store it off as an as an artifact of the build and have other tools that monitor it. Um, yeah, all sorts of stuff like that. Yeah. And one one more. So, mm -hmm. is it possible to use Sneak with private container registries or public only, like Docker, ECR, and that type of things? Free tier works with the cloud visible ones because our serve we are we're a software as a service. Um, so we you have to be able to get to us as well. Uh, if you have private registries, um, I have to temper what I say here because I know we just added some new capabilities. You. I believe you have to be in, in one of the standard tier or better to use a private uh, registry, and it, and it, it differs by registry. Um, I think if you're, yeah. if you're depending on the art, yeah, you'd have to look at that pricing page and see what the different tiers have. Um, we just added Harbor and uh, Quay support. I'm trying to think, is it out of beta yet? I think it is. Um, in fact, watch our blog. We're, I, I have on my backlog to write a blog about Harbor. Um, Later this month, but yeah, we just added that capability. I haven't actually had the training on it yet to uh, see what level of integration we have, um, and if it's available, it should be available in the free tier. If they're asking me to blog about it, it's the Harbor integration at least is should be available in the free tier. So uh, to, to find that out, you can go to Sneak and let's just learn together as we go here. If we go to the container product, it should be in this list. I know ECR is included, but that's, that's again, that's not private. Um, Artifactory is available. Oh, you know, the easy way to find this is we go to integrations. This is where we, this is where you'd set it up. So 
container registries. There you go. Yeah, Quay is coming soon. Harbors contact us. I think that's just because it may still be in beta. It may not be GA yet. Uh, we've announced it though, so I can. I'm not going to get in trouble for mentioning it. Um, Artifactory, I believe, is part of the paid tier. That's why you're not seeing. My account is set up as close to free tier as we can do. But, um, and Artifactory is going to uh, is part of the paid tier. Um, off, often, what uh, comes into play with private ones is the comp you know users who want to use a private registry often are behind a firewall. And our tool being a software as a service, we need to be able to help you configure that. And some of these ones that say contact us, it's not because it's a paid, it's because we need to work with you and figure out how that's gonna work. Uh, do you need a, we have a, uh, we had a broker version of our tool where it's kind of our service running inside your firewall. That's getting re redeveloped right now as a VPC based solution. So. There's a lot of that kind of consideration, and that's one of the reasons why it's part of the paid tools because there's extra support needed there. Awesome. Well, thank you. Yep. Thank you very I mean, much. The, the, these links that I've been uh, putting up here, um, if you don't have a free sneak account yet, you can use that link, go sign up, and uh, get set up for free, no, no cost at all. You can, um, if you don't have Docker Desktop, I mean, go get that first. I mean, we agree, people, get that. <laughs> um, if you're on Linux, of course, you use the you know Docker uh, for your distribution Linux. Go to docs.docker.com to get that. Um, we have some really cool workshops. Click on this real quick to take us there. Uh, that uh, this will take you right to the Docker set of them. That will kind of walk you through similar things to what I just did, uh, not exploiting necessarily a, a, an app, but showing you how to use our tools with Docker. Um, that link will take you there. Uh, DockerCon 2021 is coming. If you haven't pre-registered, go do so. Uh, if you are interested in talking, I believe the CFP for DockerCon closes mid-March, if I'm not yes. wrong. So get your papers in. Um, and then finally, we have a, an annual survey that we do that we have opened up. We, we've expanded to cloud native apps this year, and um, that is closing this Friday. If you are a cloud native application developer, operator, uh, manager of in any way, uh, we would love to get your input. We will be putting out a free report uh, later this, uh, this I don't wanna say this, this quarter, but later this half year, uh, that from all of the uh, analysis we get. Um, I don't know if we still, if you can get it, if it's early enough for you to get in on the free coffee, but we're, we're giving away a free certificate for coffee for the first 500 people. So you might be able to squeak in on that, uh, if you get in there now, but we really appreciate any input you have. Share your knowledge so that we can uh, share it with the world. And with that, um, as Pete said, we'll send these links out with the notes. Anything else, Pete, that you can think of? No, that is all. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Really appreciate it. Yeah, and like I said, you will, you should get an email with the recording. Uh, the links will be in there. Um, yeah. And again, just highlight the uh, CFP. If you want to give a talk uh, and you haven't given a talk before, or you're worried, oh, it's DockerCon, you know, I'll never get accepted. Please don't, please don't let that deter you. Um, we do look at first-time talks, um, and we want to help the community, right, get into speaking. So if that's something you want to do, please submit a talk. Uh, we just published a blog post with some tips and tricks on how to write um, your abstract and your title. Um, and to be honest, it's it's very important. It doesn't have to be perfect, but the better you give uh, an idea of what you want to talk about and problem solutions, those type of things are very, very helpful when we review them. So fire away, submit away. Don't worry about uh, not getting accepted. We do really uh, look at first time uh, speakers and those type of things. So don't hesitate, please. Uh, no, that that's all I have, Eric. I really, really appreciate it. Thanks for coming funny, on. Even though, I, sure. I, yeah. even though uh, the, the one of the exploits didn't want to cooperate. Uh, if you follow me on Twitter, Eric Smalling, I will post a link to uh, Lightning Talk. My uh, my director, actually, Simon, did that shows that exploit so you can kind of see it in action. He doesn't go to the detail. It's a it's a quick just show off kind of a thing. But uh, that's live demos. That's how it goes. Yeah. Makes it. You know, it, it's uh, some folks mentioned after you kind of moved on. I'm sure it's just the port. I think it's one of the, one of. Oh, the I'm sure it is. Ports it, on either side. <laughs> as soon as you look at it after this, it's gonna you like. Well, that, that this goes to show you it, best laid plans. You had all my terminals off screen, all ready to go. Everything was running. 
and um, I think my laptop had gone to sleep and something didn't. So. <laughs> yes, exactly. Oh, oh well, <laughs> uh, well. Again, thank you. Thanks everybody for joining. Really appreciate it, and uh, have a great rest of your week. Yep. Take care, everybody. All right. Take care.